Hi, creating a dashboard in Home Assistant can be a challenge, especially if you want to use it on a phone or a tablet. I will show you some tips on how you can make your dashboard small and more efficient using a couple of handy features in Home Assistant. Let's do this. When you start creating dashboards in Home Assistant, it can be tricky to set it up exactly the way you want. Cards seem to have their own opinion on where they show up, and it can be frustrating to get a grip on the layout of your dashboard. Luckily, there are some tools to get more control over your dashboard in Home Assistant. My goal was to show all information on a dashboard without having to scroll vertically, and I succeeded. I transformed this interface into this interface using the tools that I am going to show in this tutorial. Disclaimer, this is not a tutorial that will explain all the dashboard features. I'm only trying to explain how you can optimize your dashboard. Okay, I will show you the following tools that can help you to make your dashboard smaller and more efficient. The custom layout card, the subview option in a view, the brand new tapped card, and the swipe card. Oh, and I use mushroom cards too. Let's install all the components that we need. You'll need to have Hex installed. If you haven't installed Hex yet, please check out my video that explains how to install Hex. The link is in the description below. We go to Hex, then we go to Frontend, then we go to Explore and Download Repositories, and we're going to search for the Layout card. We click on Layout card, Click on download, click on download again, and click reload. Now we are going back. We click again on explore and download repositories. And now we are going to search for the tapped card. As you can see, the tapped card cannot be found here. So I have to add a repository. It might be that it can be found in your install, but I have to add this. So I'm going to click on the cross going to click on the three dots in the right upper corner and I'm going to custom repositories and I'm going to add the following repository. The link is in the description below and at category I'm going to select Lovelace. There I'm going to click on add and now I'm going to close this and we're going back to explore and download repositories and you see that the tapped card is now found if you search on tapped card. So I'm going to click on the tapped card and I'm going to click on download, click download again, click on reload. And now we are going to install the swipe card. So we are going back. We are going to explore and download repositories and we are going to search for swipe. Click on swipe card, click download, click download again and click reload. We have to do something extra for the swipe card because we have to add a resource. So if we copy this URL here, let's copy it. And then we go to the Lovelace config. So we are going to settings and then we are going to dashboards. And there we are going to click on the three dots in the right upper corner click on resources then we click on add resource we are going to choose javascript module and we are going to paste that url over here that we just copied click create and now it is added we are going to install one more thing and that is the mushroom card so go back to hex we go to front end we go to explore and download repositories and we select Mushroom. And we are going to select Mushroom. So not Mushroom Teams, but Mushroom. Click on Download. Click on Download again. And click Reload. We've installed all the components now. Let's set up a new dashboard and implement these cards. For this, we go to Settings. We go to Dashboards. We're going to create a new dashboard. So we're going to click on add dashboard and I'm giving it the title. Let's say tutorial icon. Okay. 
click admin only because I only want to see this and I'm going to show it in sidebar and I'm going to click create. So now I have a new dashboard over here and we are going to edit that dashboard by clicking on the three dots on the right upper corner. Click on edit dashboard. I want to start with an empty dashboard and I'm going to take control. Now we are first going to set the view type for this view using the custom layout card. So I'm going to click on the pencil next to home. And now you see here that I have a view type and I can do several things here. Because of the fact that we installed the custom layout card, we now have these options, masonry, horizontal, vertical, and grid. And all these options have different ways of showing cards on our dashboard. Masonry is basically the same as that you have in the default masonry card. Then you have horizontal, that means that all the cards are shown horizontally next to each other. You have vertical that shows all the cards vertically below each other. And then you have grid. Grid is the most flexible one and you can do all kinds of things with your cards. I'm going to use vertical now so that all the cards are shown below each other. Okay, and click save. We have more control over our layout now. Let's start building the view. I always start with a chips card menu because it's easy to add a lot of functionalities in there without using a lot of space on the screen. Let's first start with a main menu. So I'm going to add a card and I'm going to add a mushroom chips card. This is the mushroom chips card and I'm going to add some entities here. So I'm going to remove this one first. I'm going to add chip back as the first chip. I'm going to add an entity chip and the entity is going to be my power office. I'm going to give it a color. I'm not going through all the details of the chip cards. If you want that, please let me know in the comments and I might create a video about that. Now I'm going back and I'm going to add another chip, the entity chip. And again, I'm going to change this one, remove this, and I'm going to say Office Motion Sensor Occupancy. Let's save it. So now I have a sort of a main menu that you can see here. Now that we've created our main menu, we are going to create an interface for the most important devices that I want to control in my room. In this case, these are my lights, my heating, and my media player. There are multiple ways to do this, but since there's a new tapped card, I'm going to use that one. To add a tapped card, we are going to add card. And if you search for tapped card, you will find the custom tapped card here. And that looks pretty empty. So what we need to do is we need to use some YAML to configure this card. So we go to show code editor and let me remove this. And let me add some new information here. I already prepared some code, so let's paste that over here. And what you see is that it's not yet changing here, but that will be if I uh, save it. So what you see here is that per tab, we are going to define a card. And this code is the code that you normally see when you create a card, if you look in the YAML. The easiest way to do it is to just create that card as a separate card copy that code and then paste that code over here. So I'm going to add a mushroom light card for the lights in my office with all the options of my mushroom light card. And I have this line attributes label light, which will determine what the name of the label will be in my tab. So let's save this. And now you see that I have one tab light with this light card. Let's add another tab. Edit this, click again on view code editor, and I'm going to add another card here. Now I've added a climate card, so the mushroom climate card. Again, you can also use another card. So for instance, the default climate card of home assistant. The entity is my office front climate. 
And again, I have attributes and the label is climate. So this card will be added to the tabs and the tab title will be climate. Let's save this. And now you see I have a light and I have a climate. So I can already switch between two cards here. Now let's just add one other card. Click edit again. Show code editor. I'm going to add some code over here. And let's say it is a media player. So I'm going to add the custom mushroom media player card. My Google Home is the media player and these are all the settings of the media player. And again, we have an attributes line with label media. So a new label will be added with the title media and the media player will be shown on that tab. Click save. And now you see I have climate and I have media. And I can also use this, turn it on and turn it off. Okay, now I have three cards on my dashboard, but I only use the space for one card because I can switch between those cards in the same space. As you can see, the tab card saves a lot of space on your screen, but you can only show one card for each tab. And I do want to control my lights individually too sometimes. This is where the subview comes in handy. Let me show you how to use that. If my videos help you and you want to stay up to date with my tutorials and not miss anything to increase your knowledge of Home Assistant and Smart Home, subscribe to my channel and tick the bell. It also helps if you post a comment. This way more people get notified about these videos. I need your support so that I can keep creating these videos for you. Oh, and don't forget to hit the thumbs up for this video. This allows me to make more tutorials for you. By supporting me, you also support my work as a music therapist to help people with mental issues. Thank you. To create a subview, we go to the three dots over here. We go to edit dashboard and we are going to click on the plus. And let's say this subview is called lights. And what we are going to do is that we're going to say, yes, this is a subview and I'm going to put this on vertical too. Click save. And now we are going to add a card. So I'm going to click on add card. We're going to add a grid card. And we're going to say we want to have two columns in that grid card. And we're going to add a mushroom light card. Let's say office front left. And we're going to add another light card. Mushroom light cards. Let's say office front right. And let's add another card. Let's say mushroom light cards again and we are going to say office spots for instance oh render cards as squares i'm going to turn that off click on save and now we have our sub view here so now the idea is that if i'm going to my home view and i'm going to do a long click on this office light card that the subview card should open. So let's do that. We go to home, we are going to edit, and I'm going to show code editor. And actually I already added that code. That is this code in this case. So the hold action for this mushroom light card is navigate. And the navigation part is lights and lights is the name of our subview. So if I save this, or in my case cancel it because I already created that, and if I long press this card, then it goes to my lights view. See? Now, what happens if I click on done here? So I'm clicking on done, and now I'm going to long press on this light card, and now we see that I am in the lights view and you see that automatically a back arrow is added. So if I click on back, then I'm going back to my home card. 
what you see is that we don't have a menu over here. That is because the subview is never visible in the top bar. What I don't really like is that if I do a long click that I see the arrow all the way over here. So I'm going to add a chips card to this view tool. So let's click back. Let's click on the three dots, edit dashboard. And now we can edit the lights view. So click on the lights view, add a card. And the card will be the chips card. So the mushroom chips card. And we are going to remove this entity and going to add the chip back. Save it and you see that it's now on the bottom of the other one. So I'm going to say put it on the top by clicking on this up arrow. And now click done. So now I have this arrow here and I also have an arrow here. If you don't want to see this top bar at all and you want to use kiosk mode, I created a video for it, so check that video out. So when I'm clicking on back here, I'm going back to my previous page and now I can switch between all the cards again and I can also control all the lights separately without it clogging up this dashboard. Now we use the tab card that makes it possible to show cards in tabs. There's also another card that makes it possible to swipe horizontally between cards. This is the swipe card. Let's use that one to show some sensors. To add the swipe card, we go to the three dots in the right upper corner, clicking edit dashboard, click add card. And now we are going to select the swipe card. And again, we have to add some YAML here. The easiest way is to create a card first, copy that YAML code and paste it in here. So let's just save this for now. So it doesn't do anything yet. And now we are going to add a card and the code of that card is the code that we are going to use in the swipe card. So let's add a card. Let's say a sensor. And let's use the entity office multi-sensor temperature save this and now i have this card here but the card is not part of the slide card yet so i'm going to edit this and i'm going to do show code editor and now i'm going to copy this code here so i copied it then i'm going to cancel this and now i'm going to edit the swipe card so i'm going to paste that code over here and as you can see i get an error and that is because of that the indentation is not correct so i'm going to give it one indentation and for the first line i have to put a dash i'm going to give this one indentation more and now you see that this is here and you can already start swiping it so let's copy this and paste it again and now we're going to say i also have an office multi-sensor let's say humidity okay and now you can see that i can swipe it from office multi-sensor temperature to humidity and let's do another one copy this again paste it and make this pressure And now I have three cards there. So let's save this. I'm going to remove my card that I created to create the code. So I'm going to delete this card. I'm clicking on done. And now you see that I have a swipe card over here. I have my tapped card over here. And you see that's a lot cleaner now because I have a lot of information just on this part of the screen. So that saves me a lot of space. If you don't want to type the code from the screen, you can download the code that I've created for this video via the Ko-fi link in the description below. With this, you sponsor me and make it possible for me to keep creating these videos for you. You can use the tapped card and the swipe card for many more purposes, of course. For instance, showing your cameras like I did in my example. I think you can do this yourself now based on the information in this tutorial. I think that the subview Tapped card and swipe card are powerful tools to make your dashboard much smaller and more efficient. Let me know in the comments what your ideas are to set up an efficient dashboard that does not need vertical scrolling. 
I want to thank everyone who has supported me in making these videos and tutorials so far. I could never have done this without you. Thank you. You can support me through Patreon, Ko-fi or by joining my channel. If you also want to support me, look in the description of this video for the links. With that, you make it possible that I can continue to make these videos for you. Oh, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I will see you soon. Bye bye.